I've got a fact about time machines, actually. Oh, amazing. We're going to get to Justin's uh, top 10 facts from 1,411 facts to knock you sideways. You said you were not completely horizontal. Oh. No. <laughs> cue, the, cue the dramatic music, then. Uh, no, no, we're going to get to it in a bit. Oh. Uh, oh, we're not going to do this now. No, I want to know how you spent Valentine's Day. All uh, right, so nicely slipped in together and you've yeah, just, and you've just broken out. the link. <laughs> not doing that. We've torn the link apart now yeah. and we talk about Valentine's I'll Day. I'll talk about anything, might as well. <laughs> yeah, not worth trying, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> nah. Valentine's Day, mate, I went to see a play on my own. <laughs> and it was shit. <laughs> <laughs> regarding the last seven days. I'm your host, Dan Rowley. With me, as ever, Justin Cliff. As ever. Not as ever. But you know. <laughs> no, I'll tell you He's that. here often. Oh. Yep. And Antonio Romola. Hello. And Kenneth Trainer. It's basically bullying, isn't it? Yeah, it I is. Just yeah, yeah. That's why it, it has become like a form of, of therapeutic bullying. It is. Well, if it's therapeutic, it's then, then yeah, 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 not a problem. No, it is, it is, because I'm praised, you know, in my life, Everywhere else, <laughs> extremely highly. Mm. Um, so we're doing you a favour, and I'm enjoying this as well. I was, I was being entirely sarcastic. I'm enjoying this because normally I'm on the bullied side, so this is good to be on. Shut the up, Tom. When are you bullied? Yeah, <laughs> yeah Tom. You're not bullied. Shut up. You're never bullied on here. What are you on about? No, that's not. You're the focal point think, of the show. I think actually he's bullied in like an entirely. No, different I think way. I'm more like. I'm just. What I'm saying is, I'm normally more likely to be the one bullied than the one on the bully side. Oh. Yeah, so I, I think he is relishing being the bully. Like. Yeah, I enjoy it. I, I, I get a bit excited. <laughs> he's he's you know, waiting since he met you, Justin. I feel, <laughs> the, odd, I feel <laughs> the odd punch at him, you know, when, when you know. You're like Bart Simpson and Milhouse, but like, the tables have just turned yeah. ever so slightly. When I take it older. too far yeah. as well, because I get yeah. so excited. Now that Justin's yeah. really poor and Antonio's got his own business on the horizon, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all changed. <laughs> it's all <laughs> shit. And I've recently become Milhouse. Is that what's oh, happened? Shit. Oh, man. This is bad news. Speaking of bad news, Tony, you had a worst thing of the week. Let's kick I off. I did, yeah. It's a bit silly, but it was by far my worst thing of the week. I uh, I was boiling some potatoes. <laughs> Scrapers, by any chance? Yeah. Scrapers or bakers? Well, not bakers. I was no, just the, boilers. The, um, the salad potatoes. The new, Classic, the new, yeah. The, new uh, the mids, yeah? The mids. Um, yeah, yeah. The new you know the ones that you tend to see with like uh, in, with like just a bit of mayonnaise Do you mean, on it? When you say the new potatoes, is small it? The little potatoes. salad potatoes. You mean new potatoes, potatoes, right? Yeah. The Not like salad. a new type of potato. No, no, a little salad potatoes with the grocer. skins on that you eat the skins on it, you know? That's the, the washed ones, like the white washed. Potatoes. I was in your shop before and it said <laughs> on, on the sign, new potatoes. And I've known about potatoes for ages. No, I know. I've never <laughs> understood that. They shouldn't have put that exclamation mark after new. Yeah, that's right. I've never understood it. Stupid Italian grammar. Yeah, I always thought it was like a new kind of potato. But the thing is, people don't for potatoes, out. you only mm. ever hear them say, "Have you got new potatoes?" They never say, "Oh, have you got old?" <laughs> <laughs> well, of course they don't. No, no. Yeah, no obviously, you pride potatoes. yourself on fresh fruit and veg. <laughs> well, not any like rancid fruit and veg. I bet if you do, been I bet, to fruit of yeah. the world. <laughs> <laughs> I bet if you asked if they had any cheap stock at the back, you know, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, they go, "No, no, at the back, it's all out here." We're always, we'll always keep, we'll always keep some of the rotten stuff like at the back for a while, just in case we can sell it off to some scabby. Get, you know, like, you know. <laughs> he was well gonna say that like, something racial. Yeah, he was well gonna say something like, yeah, yeah. Some, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. some scammy. Well, no, but it's true, you get them. They PC come. filter comes in during the but podcast. It's true, like, though, you do get them. And, they, you know, they'll have, they'll have a, a, a freaking box of, like, black mushrooms for, like, you know, a quid. Oh. <laughs> Still so bad, I'm chucking them out. And you'll you know? sell them a box yeah. of black mushrooms <laughs> for a quid. Yeah. You've, this is not the first time you've infringed on several laws. So I think yeah, how many how many people do you think you've hospitalised? <laughs> well, I don't know. If they eat it, mate, then they must be, you know, it's all good for business. They wouldn't bite unless they knew they could eat it. They can see the status in. That is true. Yeah. And you know, I don't know, mate. I think or they're, they're thinking they wouldn't possibly sell this to no. me if it would make me ill. <laughs> I probably <laughs> shouldn't tell you, but a lot of the places that we end up selling the scabby rotten stuff to are restaurants. 
But they want it. There's yeah. some people that want they want to pay fuck all, so they ask us to keep the shitty stuff and, and pay for it. <laughs> yeah, really? yeah, yeah, man. Who? Well, what restaurants? No, well, you're not going to say my last name. No, no, no. But you sell it to them, so you're. Well, no, yeah, we, no, I know that hey, we I, hate I, them. I, we hate we hate serving them because they don't spend any money. I, I'm, <laughs> they're, like, they're, they're, like, they're like they're like oh, they're too expensive. Don't want that. Oh, I'll have this instead, and they just point at something that we've got on the like like um, skip trolley. You know? That's my mum. <laughs> the, skip, the skip trolley that you just take it with you. So here's all your fresh uh, yeah, here's all your fresh fruits and veg for you here, all selected and handpicked. Oh, uh, what's that there, mate? <laughs> what, what, uh, the bin, what the scraps trolley? Oh, we just they were just taking that to the incinerator. No, 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 no. I'll have that, mate. I'll have that instead. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is, that, just... is that leaking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those peppers are leaking. Yeah, I'll have them. It's true, man. One, one day we had a, a trolley, trolley just full of, like, boxes of neck jeans, like, all with, like, fluff on them and everything. They were ready to go in the bin. And a, and a, a two Romanian women came along and got my brother to... They started rummaging through the whole trolley. In the end, my brother was actually helping them empty all the boxes and filling carry bags for them you're talking about it like it's like it's wrong but it, but I no, think in a way our good. attitude towards fresh fruit and veg and like the way things look and stuff like you oh. don't want to buy fuck all from a supermarket that's got a little bit of brown on it or something no, he, let, I mean? he let them have it he let them have all the rotten well, no, stuff but no it's no kind of like for my brother it's kind of like you're taking <laughs> the piss you come here and you don't look at anything on display you just always look through the bins and you don't want to pay you don't offer Probably to pay your brother is fuming that people are coming to buy his rubbish yeah, no. <laughs> no, they don't buy it they don't buy it they, don't, they, don't, they just expect because it's going in the bin they expect to have it and my brother's like sometimes my brother says on principle he says to them no I'd rather throw it out than give it to you he goes, <laughs> he goes I'm, not a, yeah, I'm not a charity if you, if you want, want something you buy it you got you, you know you, I still paid for that if you're willing to buy it then you've still got to give me money for it but you got to throw it out yeah, I know, but if they're willing to buy it like that, then he's still. No, they're not willing it. to buy it. They they're waiting, they're waiting it. until you throw it out. Yeah, well then, that's why my brother says on principle you're not having it because no, on principle you're throwing it out. Off you go. You're throwing you're it out. Off. You're throwing it out. It's going in the bin. It's going in the bin on my tummy. Which would you prefer? Yeah. You prefer the bin. Anyway, going back to the boiling the potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> this has just become his worst thing of the week. This conversation. <laughs> <laughs> not our fault you well, massive racist you know, we've, gone on to, we've gone on to all that stuff it was all about my worst thing of the week which all started for me boiling some salad potatoes right and, I uh, thought they were new potatoes yeah salad potatoes new potatoes oh. same thing innit right well according to you were your scrapers yeah. bakers and candlestick well, makers I just, yeah. I just gave you a couple of different names to them so you'd know what sort of potatoes I was talking about just yeah? small but, ones yeah. <laughs> you know what they are they're small ones yeah, these potatoes better be small ones better be in this plot this story talking about they can be they can go oh fucking fruit and veg again can I please crack on with my story yes it's better do the potatoes feature highly? It's better be potato centric. This oh, story. It really is, mate. It's Great. The potato was my nemesis in this. In this. Uh, oh, brilliant. <laughs> so boiling some potatoes. Oh god, how many times have I said that? Uh, st- I stab a fork in one of them as you do to check this um, cook through. In one of what, the. Wasn't quite sure. In one of the potatoes, yeah. Right. <laughs> I stabbed it with a fork, yeah. Mm. Stabbed what? Like a, with a, like a pitchfork, just fucking got in there. <laughs> no, no, no. I stabbed it with a fork to test if it was like cooked through. Wasn't quite sure, so I went to taste it. I ate a bit half of it off, and I swallowed this hot potato really slowly, <laughs> and it burnt all all the way down. <laughs> and I burnt all the inside of my, my like, esophagus. Every time I swallow now, or just take a d- deep breath in, it hurts. <laughs> It's like, it feels like heartburn now, and I don't know how long it's going to take to heal. But this damn potato, just been t- tasting it, since I've done it, which was about like freaking five days ago now, I've been in pain, mate. At first I thought I was having like like heartburns while I was eating my food, like while I was eating it. And then I thought, hang on a minute. No, 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 this, is, this isn't right. This must be from the fucking... Which I swallowed in slow motion. <laughs> it felt like it was horrible. And I literally, like, no one was in the house at the time, and I just sort of stood on the spot and just thought, oh my god, oh my god, that's killing. Oh god, oh god, it's still going down. It hasn't quite gone down. Oh my god, shit. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Oh my god, just froze up, waiting, just died, like begging for this to end, this pain to end. Why you go get some cold right? water or something? Every time I eat something now, I, feel, I can feel it going all the way down. Yeah, because of this burn. Food. You fucking I can burn feel your food and pipe. Eating, eating over the last four days has been quite painful and weird. 
because I can feel every bit of food going down. And even when I drink something, I can just feel what, it. What foods have you tried? But mate, all sorts. I, I it hasn't stopped me eating. Any I, mate, I ate a spicy curry and that and that wasn't very nice. Yeah, that's well, yeah. That, that, that's been ice cream. I haven't stopped. I haven't stopped <laughs> ice cream for a week right. after eating yeah. a boiling hot potato. And you described the potato as, as your nemesis, as <laughs> if the potato was in some way. Like it's at fault here, mm. where you're. Whereas you're the human well, who's taking a boiling weird. hot potato and putting it in your mouth, and then what happened? You accidentally. <laughs> <swore>. <laughs> 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 See, the thing is, every time I. God, that's hot. Better get rid of this. The only way I know how. Every hair. time I feel Down the pain the now. Every time I feel the pain now, as I'm eating something else, I relate it back to the potato, and it feels like the potato. Every time, it's like a repetition of the potato going down. <laughs> <in> slow motion. <laughs> That's what I mean. Every so it time matter if you I keep like thinking about this potato. Or... This moment, every time I swallow something, I could just every when I feel it going down, I just think that's that fucking potato. And sometimes <laughs> it feels like it's still in there. It's time for a touch of this week in history. This week in 1600, nice round year. Giordano Bruno, the Italian philosopher, is burned at the stake by the Roman Inquisition. Right. He was one of the first people to agree with Copernicus's heliocentric universe idea. And he thought that the universe was infinite. So he was burned for crimes against the Catholic Church. Not accepting Jesus as Christ, not accepting the virgin birth, not accepting Catholic teachings and witchcraft. Uh, so, so heresy, essentially, he was burned at the stake for. Oh my God. Good, be rid of him. He wasn't a true Italian. <laughs> <laughs> or for burning people at the stake. Isn't it amazing though that, that, that like back then, you could have gone, so you're telling me you don't believe in Jesus, you think the universe is, you know, round and infinite, that the earth is round and the universe is infinite, and then, no, no, we're going to burn you at the stake, mate. Oh, I was even joking. What? Yeah, I don't well, believe in Jesus and all that. You know, like, the conviction to stick to what you fucking believe, even when you know you're going to be burnt at a fucking, it's amazing. But a lot, of them, a lot of them were burned at the stake because it was, like, more severe, although it was a favoured method, if they sort of renounced their sins having said it all and sort of published things yeah, and yeah, like spoken yeah, openly yeah. about it then although barbaric not totally stupid when you go oh no I didn't mean it all did you not <laughs> alright ah, okay off you go yeah, just don't yeah, 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 enough yeah. about that catholic bashing though, yeah, right? yeah, just yeah. stop it burning to uh, of course cleanse of sin uh, and that's got to be the worst way to go as well hasn't it burning yeah, yeah I think so burning or drowning is probably the worst way Dra- burning for sure yeah burning yeah you're right burning shit moving on alright this week in 1957, the toddler's truce is abolished. Basically, in Russia, there were two armies of babies. <coughs> and they pitted them against each other <laughs> in a battle royale. And it lasted uh, 11 years. From 1946 <laughs> to 1957. Were they still toddlers? At the end? Yeah. No, no, but that's what I'm saying. It went to 1957, but the toddler's truce is abolished. So they started <laughs> fighting again. The toddler's truce was a time uh, from 6pm to 7pm, pre-1957... And I think TV started again sort of 1947 or 1946 after the war. And it was a period between six and seven where there was just no TV broadcast so the parents could put their kids to bed. <laughs> no it was a break between children's TV in the day and then the evening's programming. Oh, so that happened in the, in the evening? Yeah, six yeah, Six or yeah. seven at night? Yeah, 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 yeah. what if it took longer to get your baby to bed? No, a, a standard British hour is all one needs to put one's child to bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, but you'd I mean, be gutted if your child was a... Pain in the ass and took like two Why hours. would you be gutted though? Just don't watch TV at seven o'clock. Because it was new, people were like, I cannot get enough of these tiny people in my living room. The baby will have to wait <laughs> until, <laughs> until, like, you know, TV ends. And they were like, right, this is getting ridiculous. No one's putting their toddlers to bed. We're going to have to turn TV off for an hour. I don't is know. That, what people happens? have always blamed TV for things. Then. Think about the TV as it was. There was probably news, like a lot of news. And mm. some some factual programming. It was probably, there wasn't. It probably wasn't on for very long either, was it? Like it probably didn't have anything broadcast for. You mean there uh, probably wasn't a lot of like story fictional. I don't think they would have had like daytime TV and then evening TV. What, Quincy probably, and stuff. No, no, no they, <laughs> they probably would have just had like <laughs> Jeremiah Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> and they probably had one show. more of like the um, Amish. Yeah, is the, what the Amish. Yeah, <laughs> the Amish version. Jeremiah Kyle. Yeah. Eli's wife refuses to toil in the field. Uh, we'll, be back, we'll be back with her beating after this. <laughs> Jeremiah Kyle. Uh, this week in 1959, Fidel Castro becomes president of Cuba after a military coup, obviously helped by Che Guevara. Yeah. And he's uh, he was he was only is he still he is alive, isn't he? 
Um, yeah, I think that so. yeah, 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 I'm sure, man. He's been ill for like a good nearly we a decade. Yes, we had this. Didn't we? Yeah, right. Ra- yeah, Raul Castro is in charge. We were talking about Che Guevara beforehand, and yeah, obviously Castro was brought up. Yeah, it's his brother that's in charge. It's just our chats with um, uh, yeah, Obama. Yeah, Raul Castro still alive. Ken's confirming. Um, yeah, but I think it's one of those. He's he's not been seen in public for right, quite yeah. some time. Every so often, there's like that's, that's well, that seems to make the news towards <clears throat> his living. Nuss, no, but that's what I mean. Because every it, you seem to see him in the news when he makes a public appearance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's like a big surprise. He's eight, eighty-eight, like so. You know, I know. He's a, and he's had he's his fair share of cigars and water. That's a good point, isn't it? Yeah. All this health crap. Look at him. Yeah. Cigars and war. <laughs> you know it's, the per- it's the perfect diet. Yeah. Eighty-eight years old. Yeah. 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 Probably has a lot of yams. The only time you hear about old people when they always say something quite nice and quite almost philosophical about their age, like. 110 years old and what's the secret and they say oh you know love and laughter and, and sweet tea it'd be amazing if Castro lives to over 100 what's the secret to your longevity cigars war communism <laughs> yeah so, he's got nine children so there's another thing keeping him going as well oh. <laughs> there was the guy there was the guy he's like he's like a fucking Sherpa dude lives on his own they, they reckon he's in his hundreds okay and um, no it's like 200 not like you know like I was going to say what, just, three... just, just encroaching over 100 let's say <laughs> just over 100 couple of years over 100, <laughs> 100. and uh, he's 60, like, 64 he's dead old he's dead old and he still like does the sheeping stuff shepherding <laughs> <laughs> sheeping. I was going to say sheeping but then I thought sheeping and then I thought shepherding uh, yeah still does the shepherding and they go how do you, what's the secret to like a young well to like staying fit and healthy it's really basic he says don't eat sugar and don't eat pasta Oh well, I'm fucked. Because <laughs> sugar <laughs> pasta is my favourite. Yeah, breakfast. it's always like that. Remember that? Remember that French lady? Oh, we were olive oil. Yeah, yeah. Nineties. She it, ate it, it with every meal, rubbed it on her skin yeah. every day as well. And she drank red wine and smoked fags. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Yeah, but she fooled everyone because she was actually only about twenty years old. And she just looked extremely pickled. And yeah, we've spoken about her a couple of times before. Jean Calmont. Oh yeah. Yeah, she said, "I've only got one wrinkle, and I'm sitting on it." <laughs> Nice. <laughs> nice. Brilliant. This week in 1978, the first Ironman triathlon takes place on Oahu Island, Hawaii. And it was won by a guy called... Tony Stark. Gordon Haller. No, not Tony Stark. <laughs> <laughs> he, was the only, he was the only guy that entered, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a hundred mile flight. Followed by, <laughs> by saving the world from a bad guy. No, finishing just... with that having sex with Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> yeah. Only one guy's done it, and that yeah. was fictional. And that one from that um, Ted Hughes book. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio's head Just is a light head. Head. <laughs> <laughs> Man in the Iron Mask. <laughs> Iron Triathlon. So yeah. you have Jeremy Irons. <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio's face. Yeah. We're all out. A guy yeah. off the bottle of Iron Brew. Yeah, yeah. Just comes as a white silhouette. <laughs> CEO of Hot Point that make irons. Yeah. Hot Point, there you go. I couldn't yeah. think of a company. An ironmonger. Yeah. They should just choose one representative from the, you know. From all the, someone from the Iron Age. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thaw them out. This is great. This has got legs. Who's guys. Ironside? Uh, he's not he's the one in the wheelchair. Chair, Raymond he? Buck. Is he the one in the yeah, chair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Raymond yeah. Buck. Ironside. Yeah, name. That's right. Well, there you go. go. So, yeah, him. Yeah. Although he'd probably do the, he'd probably do the Paralympic one. Um, <laughs> Iron Mike, what's that? For? Iron Mike Tyson. Yeah. There you go, Mike Tyson. Oh, nice, the Iron Sheik. Oh, we're on a roll, we're on a roll. Yeah. Oh, oh, we stopped again. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what an Ironman triathlon consists of? Yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. Have you like, heard of it? He's no. competed in one. Did they complete it? Yeah, they completed it. Okay, so the record is 8 hours 32 minutes, okay? You do it all in one go, and it is a 2.4 mile swim a 112 mile bike ride and then a 26.2 mile run aka a marathon yeah whoa you finish with with the marathon yeah whoa you've done all that and then you and you oh start God. the marathon wow. you've swam you've you've ridden a bike which you could get away with a bit of cheating here and there <clears throat> yeah, yeah you could just you cruise could just stop, yeah. downhill yeah. yeah you could well I wouldn't stop it's a, it's a moment to <laughs> <laughs> that's not cheating no yeah no that's stopping it's, it's a moment to relax and you just stop pedaling for a bit yeah, yeah. yeah. it's insane but they, they, it's nuts but then there's there's a, a, a more extreme version than, than the Iron Man now because so many people have got through the Iron Man it's just called like Ultimate Iron Man or something like the that the Diamond it's, Man yeah. <laughs> yeah what about the Iron of the Tiger 
Sorry, just carry on. <laughs> well, did, no, no, no. Let's, all, let's, all, have, that let's all have a quick moment just to absorb that. <coughs> all right. And this week, in 1878, the first phone book is issued in New Haven, Connecticut. Now, I don't think it was very much book like. It was the first page, one, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, they the might have waited ages until they oh, until until they warranted a book. That that makes much more sense. But hold on, yeah, eighteen seventy-eight. I'm not sure. I think it would have been a couple of pages. Eighteen seventy-eight. Yeah. the first phone book. Yeah, I don't know, man. It probably would have just been like fire station, police station, uh, doctor, <laughs> all the same number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just the mayor. <laughs> it probably would have just been like who else? Ah. who else I don't know just the, the important people in it the mayor like like the headmaster of the only school in the, in the town or <laughs> you know so you've got you can contact the school your kids go to oh yeah that's why you ordered a phone box where kids can go and play Butcher, it's the headmaster's number yeah, Butcher, yeah. green grocer just you know just all the <laughs> it's getting bigger it's a town small enough to have one school one butcher one green grocer but you have to have a phone in the middle <laughs> yeah. oh, is that the green grocer yeah you can see me so. <laughs> yeah. hello I'm waving at you through my window yeah no I just wait is the butcher's open look to your left <laughs> <laughs> is the phone not in the butcher's yeah, you are right. Yeah, no way. C- couldn't see the wood for the trees there. Uh, I'll see you later. No, but seriously, they probably didn't have a lot of phone numbers, did they? It was no. probably just like important people that they need to get hold of. It was like great like emergency uh, services. It's interesting. I'd, I'd like to see the first ever phone book. I bet it still exists in a museum. And Ken is showing me a picture uh, of it. And it's well, four, four, it's four numbers on it. Wow. Four numbers on it. The internet is an amazing thing, isn't it? The first telephone directory consisted of a single piece of cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> it was issued on the 21st of February, 1878, and listed 50 businesses in New Haven, Connecticut. Was the mayor's one of them? Yeah, uh, the fishmongers there, was it? <laughs> <laughs> Butchers, dead. It contained 248 Thank names you. and addresses of individuals. And businesses. No, that's. Oh the, no, that's the British, the first yeah. British one. 1996 is the first Yellow Pages, but that's the no, long. That, no, that's the year the first telephone directories were online in the USA. Yellowpages.com and whitepages.com. Right, well done, Jay. The first Again. British telephone directory was published <laughs> on the 15th of January 1880, so only two years after the first one in New Haven, Connecticut, and that's the one that contained 248 names and addresses of individuals and businesses in London. Uh, telephone numbers were not used at the time as subscribers were asked for by name at the exchange. Oh, the directory is preserved as part of the British phone book collection at BT Archives. <laughs> that fly fishing by J.R. Hartley. Yeah. I remember the second hand bookshop in Dundee had a copy of it in the window. Like like years after the advert. Well, five years probably, not that many. But yeah, years after and yeah, do you have fly fish but they had a, he made a sign, do you have fly fishing? Yes we do, and there was it was there. <laughs> and um I never thought about it at the time, but it's like I think now, like, like would he have actually sold that book? Like, was he so proud? He seemed to put such effort into the sign and oh, so right. proud about the idea. Oh, but he got in and said, "How much for that?" Yeah, it's five grand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You gonna get it? <laughs> <laughs> you get really, out of my shop. You realise that it's just like the prop from the advert, and it's just yeah, it's just loads of blank pages. It's just a brick. I don't know if it is or not. Yeah, see, I should have asked him. Is that a real book? And and see. Too late. But if you had a time machine, is that what you do? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I think I'll just I'll just kind of you know speculate about it yeah. until I die. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I've got a fact about time machines actually. Oh, amazing! We're going to get to Justin's uh, top ten facts from one thousand four hundred and eleven facts to knock you sideways. You said you were not completely horizontal. Oh. No. <laughs> cue, the, cue the dramatic music then. Number ten. When the pyramids were built. Woolly mammoths still roamed the earth. Yeah. Wow. Do you think any of them ever went and visited, Tom? Well, they might have used the woolly mammoths to help them build it. Jewish woolly mammoths. They might have, <laughs> they, they might have, they might have used the mammoths as... as uh... All right. Number nine! 6% of drivers deliberately swerve to kill animals. Who's admitting <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus! She did not, she like did not appreciate oh, that. God. Eight. In 2003, Morocco offered Iraq 2,000 monkeys to help them detonate mines. <laughs> oh. 
Yeah. Also, you just tip the monkeys into a yeah. minefield. Yeah. The, the, so, there's, there's, so they've got a field which they know is, you know, littered with hidden mines. So they just do they just put monkeys across yeah. it. Yeah. The monkeys well, run that's... across it. I just yeah, that was in two thousand three. Yeah, mate. That's that wasn't like. You know, I, I reread that. I, I sort of skimmed over the date. Read Morocco offered Iraq two thousand monkeys to help them do it. What the fuck? And then I went back to the top and was like, that's in two thousand and three. Mate, it's because they got a massive problem with monkeys. They're like rats are everywhere, like nicking people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, so, so Morocco's shit. got a problem with monkeys. Iraq's got a problem with mines. <laughs> Some genius yeah. put those two things together. I just love the idea of the phone call like that. Hello, is that is that Iraq? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, yeah, yeah. It's Morocco. Um, yeah, he got a bit of a bit of a landmine problem. Yeah, it's yeah, awful. It's, yeah, oh, it's terrible, terrible, terrible. Yeah, we uh, we've got two thousand monkeys. You know, you yeah. have a, we've got a problem too. We've got yeah. a monkey problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the monkeys are locking up the jails. Happy with that That kind of knocked me sideways when I went back and read the date. I would have thought that was going to be like you know year like 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 years and years and years ago when it was to- when it was kind of acceptable to have like this kind of mass animal genocide. Two thousand three. It's just like. If, if you had an infinite number of monkeys in an infinite uh, minefield, mines. how long before we realise that we've made a terrible mistake? <laughs> yeah. yeah, how long before? Yeah, uh, how, many, happened, how many monkey limbs would it take to yeah, land fly in, in household gardens? <laughs> it wouldn't have happened realized. in Diana's lifetime. <laughs> no, yeah. definitely not. No, no, not at all. What you don't see in that famous footage of her walking is all the monkeys that she's got just running in front of her that she's tipping out of a big monkey bucket. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven! A salamander can have its brain removed, cut into slices, shuffled, minced, put back in and still function as normal. What? What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, these are all animal rated, by yeah. the way. That one Hell. knocked me sideways. To the point that I thought, well, who did that first? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who found that out? It's a gradu- yeah. Is it a gradual process? <laughs> right, we're taking the brain out. Obviously, it's it, it's dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. uh, because of, of brain death. How have they kept yeah. it alive? They I have it no alive. idea. I think that they can they they can logically say right a salamander's brain works in such a way that it wouldn't matter if these components were entirely mixed up and put into different places, it sure. would still function as normal. But what's the uh, point? If you're I putting it into a blender, what's the point in chopping it into slices and shuffling it first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's going into a slices, blender. Slices, shuffling, and then mincing it, which would just scoop it all together. I think it's just an example of you could do what the hell you wanted to it and put it back in and it still work. It should have just been, you can rape a salamander's brain and oh, put oh, it back oh, in. Oh, <laughs> uh, a salamander can have his brain removed, cut into slices, shuffled, mince, and put back in and still oh, function as good, normal. Wouldn't it be good? That'd be a good power to have if we had that, like, humans. Not Really, Tom? Yeah, because no. we could like fall over, bang our heads, and then brains come out, and be know that they could take us back. <laughs> when? When have you ever seen someone fall over the brain game? Well, no, I mean like you know, I didn't mean fall. That I is a hefty. I started off as an accident, and then went on to like you know like kind of car crash. Number. This is the non-animal related fact. Oh, so my, they're not all about animals. So they're not all animal related. Um, on the 28th of June 2009, Stephen Hawkins hosted a party for time travellers from the future. Yeah. Nobody showed up. It's Hawking. Stephen Hawking? Yeah? Yeah, what is Stephen Hawking? There's no way you're going to burn it. Yeah, he's, he's all... He's Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow, that didn't knock anyone sideways. No, he's maintained that for a long time. It's in... Um, where, where, he said it years and years ago, didn't he? He said, yeah. like, if people... If, if it, time travel was possible... There would be people from the future taking pictures of us now, like coming back and yeah. the whole yeah, 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 yeah. But how do we know that hasn't happened? Yeah, we don't. Make it look like a. Have you seen Char- that Charlie Chaplin uh, scene in that film? That woman's using a mobile phone. Yeah, she's yeah. not. Well, <sighs> you can't say that she is or that she isn't. Well, Next fact. Who, who's she calling? The future. The mayor. Oh, the <laughs> mayor. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, that's the thing we uh, He's got you there. Yeah. Get so me the fucking got you there. Number five! Human teeth evolved from fish scales. Ooh, nice. I like that. I like that one. Weird. Yeah. Is it? So how did that come about? All part of the evolution process. If you think about them, they, they it's not... serve a similar function. Yeah, we had what a about... discussion about evolution last week. It's not... We did. It wasn't that there was fish <laughs> and there was humans and then they evolved them, Tony. It, it, it doesn't mean it like that. There's not a... <laughs> <laughs> I just don't get it. They, yeah. well, they, well, they, they serve a different purpose, but what I mean is like probably they're made up of the same kind of... Is it, know, is it, is it calcium? Yeah, it's like calcium thing. Cool. 
and Tone's face looks like. So hang on, if fish hadn't ever got. We if, have taken his brain out, sliced it up into segments. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. If, if yeah. fish hadn't. Um, have, if fish hadn't involved teeth, we wouldn't have teeth now. No, no. no. Remember I mean, last week when we were talking about question. evolution and you said, didn't we all start off as monkeys, as chips? Yeah. Apes. Well, and before Dan said, no, that, you got it. It's like, we all started off we as did, fish. Yeah. It started off as. Wait, 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 wait. Because it was a single celled organism, then it split in two, and it kept splitting. What, and then that and all it, went tipped up and it started again? No, no. it didn't. No, it just, <laughs> no. They just kept splitting and changing. <laughs> that didn't work. No, we can't get humans out of fish. Yeah, uh, let's start again. No, the aim oh, wasn't we'll to humans. The Wait, what is having that thought process <laughs> yeah. and that conversation? Oh my god, I don't get it. Don't worry about it. No, got, it just got, keep got, going. It's the same process. It's still going on. We just, we right. just the result of a cell that divided. Yeah. And it's still going on today, and it right. was yeah. And it fish, all happened in right. the ocean. And ocean, oh, right, and then right, right. Check, fish check, crawled out of the ocean. Yeah, right. I get it. Yeah, okay. Okay. I get yeah. it. So we all started in the ocean. Off, check this yeah. out: yeah. dolphins and whales, okay. right, right, were once mammals that walked on land that went back into the ocean. Mm. Okay, pretty cool. cool. That was so wasn't can, even in these facts that knock you sideways. Number four, Philip is Greek for horse lover. <laughs> yes, I knew that. I quite appreciated that just because. No, I knew that. Phil. I knew that because Philip K. Dick, the science fiction writer, who right. wrote Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, Blade Runner, Blade Runner. Yeah. Um, wrote the short story Minority Report, various other things. His one of his great books is a book called Phallus, and the lead character who was based on him, his name is Horse Love of Fat. Nice, Philip. Dick. Yeah, there you go. That knocked me a bit sideways, Ken. <laughs> More so than these. N -n -n Number three! Tomato frogs secrete a glue that causes a predator's lips to stick together. Oh, no. The only reason I, I chose this one is because that's not really an advantage if the tomato frog is inside the predator's mouth when that happens. Or maybe it's more like that thing of, oh, fuck you, mm. if I'm gonna die right now and you eat me, then you're never gonna be able to eat anything ever again. So I'm taking yeah. you down with me. Yeah, nice. No, yeah. Obviously, they I, don't I, all I, get I, I think we could understand why you'd be spiteful in a situation like that. Damn straight. Yeah. I think I think you can understand that, why you, why you take vengeance whilst in the in the last. I would feel more comfortable in the sea, because I'm scared of the sea because I don't want to get eaten by a shark. Everybody gives you the statistic of there's only this many people killed by sharks, but that's still, that's still more. It's not no people which is the only time I'll go in the ocean, and I'm more likely to get eaten by a shark in the sea than on land, I reckon. So mm. if I could secrete a poison, I reckon I'd go into the sea. If I knew when he went Nom, and just started eating me, I could just like poo out some some shark killing gel. Yeah, dude. I'd do that. Number two this week. Jaguars are attracted by Kelvin Klein's obsession for men. <laughs> Kelvin Klein? Oh. Calvin Klein hanging out with Stephen Hawking's. <laughs> <laughs> Calvin then, Calvin Klein. It wasn't Calvin, Calvin then as if like, it's just a, you just yeah. got it wrong. Calvin Klein. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Calvin, it's... everyone knows what I'm talking about. So is it Obsession for Men, is it only male Jaguars? Uh, or is it female Jaguars? Just, it, it, it's only gay male Jaguars. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, number one. Eight million years ago, which is a relatively short time considering, guinea pigs were the size of cows. Because I just thought, well, there's no bones of that, is there? Is that is that somewhere? I think what it means is an early stage of guinea pig. So like back in prehistoric times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because the first thing that popped in my head was just a giant fucking guinea pig. Well, yeah, that's what it's saying. With, yeah. uh, with others. Being milked <laughs> <laughs> by a giant pellet to one of those giant water bottles on the yeah, side yeah, of the yeah. fence where it, like, it pushes the boy with its tongue, this waterfall just comes yeah, yeah, yeah. 9,000 gallon tub. They're only the size of cows, Dan. Yeah, I think we're all imagining this to be like, I, I just have visions of plucking one of its hairs out and like using it as like some sort of, I don't know, post or pole or. You're totally sword. right, because when I was talking about the water bottle, I was like, the size of cows. What, like, like I'm in Honey I Shrunk the Kids? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, like we're, we're, we've made it too big. <laughs> yeah. Like, it can fit in this room, essentially, at one of these guinea Oh, no, four, four or five would fit in this yeah, room, no yeah, problem. Yeah. But the thing you gotta think about, they're quite good, they're quite agile as well. They move fast, they climb stuff, mm. they climb oh, up. Yeah, they do. Oh, the King guinea pig like, yeah, rodeo yeah. thing with guinea pig fighters. Yeah, they but probably giant. climb yeah. up the side of buildings and stuff. I had another fact actually the other day. Uh, an elephant weighs less 
than a blue whale's tongue. That's right. Oh. Yeah. yeah, that blows your mind, don't that one? That wasn't even in. You know, that was just another meat. They're fact. pretty big blue whales, tongue. They're the biggest animal that's ever lived. Crazy, isn't it? I appreciate this book a lot because... You know, they I do, do like a good fact, and I love an animal fact, and it's full of them. Yeah, it's, 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 it's done the rounds now. We've done we've done a full round robin with the facts book. Time to time to get a new book to hand around. Well, I don't know. Start backwards from this one, mate. I bet none of us have uh, read giant anteaters eat three thirty thousand ants a day. Yeah, maybe get a new book. <laughs> <laughs> and now a bit of class. It's time for the literary salon with Kenneth Trainer. Hello everyone. Uh, good, good evening, Ken. Evening. Uh, we didn't do one of these last week. No, we didn't. So I'll just put down my evening standard. <laughs> and last week I was um, I was off work, so I read quite a lot. Oh. So it's it's uh, kind of unfortunate, really. Oh, so we didn't do. It. I'm just saying, just saying because. Go you know, through the books I, you read and your favourites. My favourites. Um, yeah, Sputnik Sweetheart by Haruki Murakami. That was wonderful. Still on the binge. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because before that. I read um, After the Quake, collection of short stories by him. Nice. Yeah, that was good. Um, one that was quite interesting, I quite enjoyed, um, you two would probably like it, there's a book called Station Eleven. Right. Um, which was like the Waterstones book of the month for January, I think it was. I think I picked it up at the end of January. Um, Is that the station where you get to train to Hogwarts? No. <laughs> right. It's by Emily St. John Mandel, I think her name was. Okay. It's about... Um, it's like a sort of post-apocalyptic set I'm in. novel, but it's also pre-apocalyptic because it like it oh. starts off no it it starts off with a performance of King Lear, oh yeah, and like but the way they've staged it is that there's like three they've got three child actress tra- actors these three young girls um, just like they're they, you know they're on stage playing and stuff while the Lee's audience comes in yeah. yeah playing his daughters but then later on there's a scene when they come back into it they don't have any dialogue obviously but they just you know they're like kind of haunting him and it's like the lead actor playing Leo has a heart attack on stage and dies and then one of the little girls like then that night is when this thing called the Georgia flu starts to spread and like arrives in Toronto and you know it goes around the world and kills like like if you get this flu you're dead 48 hours later right and so it's like and then it cuts to like 20 years later when they call it year 20 like after the collapse of it and some of the survivors and one of the little girls is now um, with this kind of gang of like sort of musicians and actors and they just travel around the kind of little settlements that have you know that still exist like in like sort of petrol stations or old um, you know like Walmarts and things like yeah, the people yeah. are like occupying those and they just kind of travel between them in a certain area around uh, Lake Michigan and um, you know they perform Shakespeare and they perform music and they scavenge and blah 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 but it, it cuts back and forth between <clears throat> two things because it's like she's obsessed with these these comic books like one of them called Station Eleven and it tells you all about them and the creation of them and it's like the actor who played Leo's his first wife and like she's obsessed with him and like um, like whenever they find like they scavenge in a house or something she's looking for like celebrity gossip magazines and stuff about him oh, and it's yeah. all you know it, it was yeah, I really liked it. I really liked it. It was um, sort of, I don't know, I guess it was about the effect of a life, because although he was like a really famous actor, this character, it's sort of about the way the effect he had on lives around him, and that even then, 20 years later, it was, you know, like after the collapse of civilization, there were people that had known him, and I guess potentially it's saying that there will be other stories like that. I think so. I think so. That was what I, I took from it, but I quite liked it. It was quite, it was well executed it was really well plotted and it jumped around you know in time back and forth without you know necessarily it didn't signal it in any big way you didn't have chapters that you know chapter headings that told you where you were you just jumped around between you know where you were with particular characters and whether it was you know on the night that the flu kind of started to really spread the night that the airports closed down and then people had characters are dying and you know you didn't realise they were going to die but of course they had to tell you a certain bit of their story and establish a certain thing that Right, was, yeah, was yeah. you know, explaining something that people were discussing later on, but they don't necessarily understand it because you know they don't have the insight that you do because everything ended. It was good. Sounds good. Station Eleven. Awesome. Really good. Yeah. Um, what else did I get through? Oh, I read loads of stuff. Loads of stuff regarding the pain of others by Susan Sontag. 
I wrote a book called Malign Velocities, Capitalism and Accelerationism by a theorist called Benjamin Noyes. I read An Amorous Discourse in the Suburbs of Hell by Deborah Levy. Sort of, um, it's a poetry thing, yeah, it's good. You're so so smart. literary. I did, I did all right, yeah. Fuck. Didn't, do any, didn't do anything else with the time off, but yeah. And I, so, I, uh, I, I barely read 10 facts out of uh, 1,411 facts. Yeah, but I bet, you, I bet you read loads on the internet. Watched a lot of cat videos. When I put the subtitles on when I'm watching the telly, that's reading, isn't it? Yeah. That yeah. counts. My favourite, it's a toss-up between um, Station Eleven, which is really good, um, and Sputnik Sweetheart, which was, was um, yeah, really, really wonderful in the way that only Murakami can be. Super. As I'm finding out. So, but I'll say, I guess I'll say Station Eleven because I bang on about Murakami a lot, just because I'm on the, on the binge. Got a few big ones coming up from him. Um, got a copy of Kafka on the Shore, which is a big, Ooh. big, thick, chunky one. So that's going to take a bit of concentration. Is it about Franz Kafka? A week or a couple of weeks. I don't know. All right. It's got a cat on the front. Right. There's always cats in uh, Franz Kafka was a cat, so it's good, good estimation that. It yeah. Might be about in him. fact, the protagonist, the narrator of Sputnik Sweetheart, is referred to as K in um, in a letter that's is only referred to in a couple of points, but yeah, oh, nice. in, in a text written by one of the other characters. Do email us the last seven podcast at gmail.com or follow us on Twitter at the last seven. You ready, mate? Yeah. Then it's time for a question of tone. So, tone. This comes from uh, Cardiff. This comes from one of our faithful listeners in Cardiff. If you could be a different race, which race would you be and why? I think I think it'd be quite nice to be a uh, Swiss. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Interesting. Because they seem like they've got a really like they've got a really good quality of lifestyle yeah. like like in their country. It's a beautiful country, Switzerland. You know, mm. it's, a, it's oh, it's amazing. Is it as immaculate as people Everything think? Everything seems to be yeah. really well ordered. And what about all of the Nazi gold? Didn't, didn't come across any of that on my travels. <laughs> <laughs> but what 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 about the race I of, did... of, of the Swiss makes you want to... Because you could just go live in Switzerland. That isn't changing your... No, well... That isn't what? becoming another race. Highest mountain in Europe in Switzerland, isn't it? Young Frau? Yeah, is it? Yeah, the yeah. highest point in Europe. I've been on there. I've been up there. They've also got that... All the way? Yeah, by the very yeah, top, man. Right. It's like a bu- way above the clouds. Fuck it, you can't even see that. Like, uh, there's no the view. Did you walk. The view is amazing, even though there's just like clouds. Oh. And right. No, you can get like a thing up there, can't you? A train. Yeah, you get there. to the very I top. I don't know. I've not been. Yeah, yeah. There's like a huge glacier thing, like glacier yeah. um, thing. You just sort of look. Yeah, you better get pronunciation on. correct, mate. Otherwise, you sort of fucking <laughs> have a field day, mate. Nah, no, it's all right, man. Don't worry. Glacier, uh, yeah, you were saying. I remember when you going up the Jungfrau that on another mountain nearby, and you can see it from that train. They've got that restaurant that's in that James Bond film, isn't it? The one the rotating oh, restaurant amazing. on the side of the mountain. I never went to that, but you could you could see it clearly. What my dad pointed out to me, I thought the best thing ever. I do remember seeing that, but they never old. mentioned yeah. it was from James Bond movie. There's a James Bond movie that it's in, mm. yeah, from Switzerland because we there was no talk <laughs> of you were just on the train going. The Swiss eyes only. I just remember seeing that. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, know which one it is. It's I think awesome it is a Roger Moore one, though, isn't Swiss it? Finger. <laughs> I was thinking of saying. I was thinking Dr. of saying. Swiss. I was thinking you of saying African, African, so that I could, so that I could just be like really close to like wildlife, like <laughs> every day, like riding out. I'd, I'd, if I could be a different race, I'd be black. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and then it's like Jamaican, so that I'd be cool. Yeah, just, <laughs> just to be cooler, just to be cooler, and just to be just generally more awesome. Go around, and drink loads of lilt, and look cool drinking it. <laughs> Fuck me! I mean, there was always going to be drink a really out, thin drink out of coconut shells and look really cool doing it, or like yeah, you uh, can pretty much do that stuff anyway, though. Mate. Lilt. Yeah, lilt. <laughs> I was completely wrong. It's um, on a Majesty's Secret Service. All oh, right. It's not Roger Moore at all. Well, no, Indian, no, 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 Indian, Indian man. Indian. Indian. Yeah. Why? Love it. Love the food. 
Uh, love the dancing styles as well. Fucking <laughs> brilliant. Love the music. Yeah. Love all the colours. I'd love to be able to dress up in colours and gowns like that and just get away with it. Your you, brother does it every this, day. This right? time, <laughs> I wish I could dress up like that. I wish I could dress like that now, but I just know that people look at me and think, what are you doing? You're not you're not an Indian. You're not allowed to wear a why, sari. Why dressing like that? I wish I could. I love that shit. Well, you, you should then. Because you're Swiss. <laughs> My mum, my mum, my mum says the same. She wants to like wear like you want to be from Swindon and stuff. And I'm like, you should. <laughs> it would really suit you. You should wear that stuff. And she was like, no, because they might take, find it, you know, offensive. And I was like, I don't really, know, not really. And I went to Sweden and bought a jacket from there, like a, like a green, like sort of bomber jacket, sort of coat. And I was walking around in it. And I put it on like as soon as I bought it because I loved it. I was walking around the town that I was in, and it felt like people were like looking at me weird. And I was all of a sudden like become really paranoid that I, you know, like the rule of like if you got your left ear pierced, you're gay or something like that. Yeah. Like you know, just that that as a rule of thumb. Yeah. I, I didn't think it was anything to do with like sexuality or something like that, but I thought, oh shit, what if like a green bomber jacket means I'm a Nazi or something, or, or like you know, what if it means something in Sweden that, that Nazi, I'm unaware Nazi of? Sympathizing. Yeah, you're under arrest. Why? It's called a bomber jacket. <laughs> What do you think was going to happen? <laughs> Maybe you just look really strange. Maybe the jacket just didn't suit you, mate. Yeah. Justin looks <laughs> sweet. It was, you know, it was like, it had the nipples cut out and was like, <laughs> <laughs> had a zip that went all the way up the face and all the way around the back of the hood. It became almost like a mask of some description. Um, yeah, it had like a red ball sort of thing that you chew on as you wear it. Yeah, they said it would go well with trousers, but I didn't think. <laughs> Ken, Ken, if you could be of a of a, another race, what would you be? Um, I don't know really. I, I admire the um, the French a bit. Nice. I admire their um, a lot of their culture, especially yeah. all well, especially all their theorists. I'd love to have been a French student in the sixties. Oh, <laughs> Fucking man. brilliant. Japanese, perhaps. Fantastic. Awesome. Read the, the Murakamis in the original uh, Japanese, which is something I'll probably never ever do. Will I? You could, you could, you could look at them. I could try. What? No, well, I want to read them because, because it's a really different experience that language. But is it like learning a language? Doesn't everything just immediately automatically translate itself into English? Oh, you'd be really good at martial arts if you were Japanese. Why would you know, like in that? films and stuff. <laughs> Not why? Why would you automatically <laughs> be really good at martial arts? Because they learn it as kids and that. No School is like part of this sport, like gymnastics and that. They learn it all. Like gym, I'm not very good at gymnastics. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I'm kind of with Ken on this one. Like, you know, the, I think I think it's more Oriental, the kind of lifestyle of like, you know, Zen meditation and yeah, like, all those it. kind of ideals and stuff. Not necessarily Japanese or, or Chinese or, or you know, but just that kind of Oriental. Mongolian, influence. Mongolian in your case, Dan. Would you be white? <laughs> Ken and I. For some reason, we're looking up wrestlers the other day on Wikipedia, and I looked at a wrestler, or chuck a link up to you, called Ahmed Johnson. So I remember there were like factions that were in wrestling at the time. Welcome in wrestling fans. And uh, one of them was called the Nation of Domination, and the leader of which was called Farouk. It was how The Rock came oh, into yeah, wrestling. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. called Rocky Maivia. And he introduced him and Ahmed Johnson as new members by going, these guys are bigger, badder, and blacker than ever. <laughs> 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 and these two guys walk out. Ahmed Johnson now is really, really fat. But then we... Uh, then we really... Yeah, you don't look like the same guy. No, it's horrendous. <laughs> There was a picture of him like hugging a cardboard cutter of himself from when he was a wrestler. Oh, and it really? Just looks yeah, like, yeah, 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 it looked completely. Yeah. You see in the eyes. When we were looking for uh, this Ahmed Johnson as well, we, we saw that he'd had loads of different ring names, and obviously, like a lot of them do, wrestle for different organizations, not just the WWF or WWE now. But he was in a team with a guy. Now, this wrestler was active in 2002. Hang on, hang on. What was it? What was he Salim called? Salim Jihad. <laughs> Yeah, no it's a guy called um, Ron Killings because the conversation oh, was yeah. about the conversation I remember was about because Mike Tyson converted to Islam oh. when he was in prison and right. it was about what was his name that he had adopted his actual you know you thought it Islamic was name I thought it was Malik Shabazz which Dan was like no fuck off his name's Malik Abdulaziz Malik Shabazz was Malcolm X's name when he converted right, to right, Islam right, right. but then when you look it up, there's this guy, Ron Killings, um, R Truth, that's right, K yeah. Crush, Ron the Truth Killings is his name. He wrestled under the name K Malik Shabazz. In 2002, he joined Extreme Pro Wrestling as K Malik Shabazz and he teamed with Salim Jihad 
uh, Raphael Muhammad and Riley the Milkman Hood as the new, <laughs> as, as the new Panthers. Oh, amazing. Um, they were a faction, yeah, based on the Black Panther Party. All right, so on that wrestling note, real wrestling, I'd like to thank my co-participants for this week. Kenneth Trainer, mm. Justin Cliff. I think as a little exercise, you should say goodbye to us, but you should just spontaneously make up our wrestling names as you do so. Do you want to hear something else that I was looking up? Okay. Based on last week, um, some famous last words. Yeah, cool. Johnny Ace, R&B singer. He died in 1954 while playing with a pistol during a break in one of his concerts. And his last words were, "I'll show you that it won't shoot." <laughs> That's a beautiful thing to end on. Richard Feynman said, "This dying is boring." Ah, oh, sweet, beautiful, eh? Emily <laughs> Dickinson's were, um, "I must go in for the fog is rising." Pretty good. Wow, yeah. Poet, you know what I mean? This is reminding me of something Michelle told me the other day. He told me that Tupac's last words were. Um, I've been shot. No, <laughs> <laughs> well, the police officer. The police officer, because he was still alive, and the police officer asked him, um, "Who was it? Who did it?" And he just told him to fuck off, and that was his last words. <laughs> the story is that it, yeah, it's the cop that got there on the scene, and Tupac just said "fuck you," and then yeah, he's. He says, um, as soon as he got to the hospital, he went into surgery and was heavily sedated. And I guess he went into a coma and never really came out of that until they took him off life support. So that moment that I talked to him was his last real living moment where he was speaking. I talked to the cop who rode in the ambulance with him. He said Tupac never came out of it. He was unconscious the whole way. He never said anything at the hospital. So there was nothing else. His last words were, fuck you. Uh, so on that note, I'd like to thank uh, Rocky Balbona. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Graveheart. Nice, nice. Part Undertaker, part William Wallace. Yeah. And Hulk Dugan. <laughs> Dugan. Yeah, I like that. You know, I'm sort of named after Hulk Dugan. <laughs>